Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Beast just did an interview, almost 90 minutes, it's a long one, with John Yushe, YouTube, former insider, Instagram insider. They sit down for 85 minutes to talk about strategy, or do they? The title of this video is Mr. Beast Reveals His Biggest Secret. Well, I think you guys are gonna be a little bit surprised, maybe somewhat disappointed when I let you in on what the biggest secret is. Let's get into it. Jimmy, thanks so much for having me in Greenville, man. I'm so excited yeah. to be here. I this is gonna be awesome. It's your first time, right? This is my first yeah, time. Yeah. I know. I wanna. Um, we're in our second studio. After this, one, take it to my main studio so we can see it. So yeah, the cool stuff hasn't even happened yet. Well, dude, I feel like well, this is the first time you're showing this studio publicly, which is your thumbnail studio. So yeah. I, I had to open up by asking, uh, where the heck are we? And what are you filming here? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> we're, to be specific, you're in a church. So when I first started, there were there, there's just no warehouses or studios in Greenville, North Carolina. Yeah. So uh, there are a lot of churches though. We're in the Bible Belt. Yeah. So I bought a church and then we converted it by just like um, you know. Okay. One of the things I just want to say real quick, John Uche is obviously like fanboy. Guy can't stop smiling. Uh, I don't have really any experience. I don't know John personally. I know people who know John. I think that he's pretty legit type of a dude. But anybody who comes into an interview that's just like already like <laughs> I gotta be a little bit warned about that. One of the things I really like about interviews is when you kind of hit these people with like hardball questions. Jimmy also is media trained. I mean, you can tell like the way that he answers his questions, the way that he smiles, the way that he's got a lightness about the responses. And so I think that that carries a lot of weight with this stuff. I am gonna watch this double speed just because I can't sit here for 90 minutes and watch everything in one X. <laughs> I just don't care that much for number one. But number two, interviews, I feel like they were made to be watched in 2X. So let's get back into it. So he says a church. He renovated a church. Basically taking all the futile and converted it into a studio. And so that's where we started filming. The problem is, you know, it's not that big. So eventually we had to move as our videos got bigger over to a new studio we built. And so we just converted this into a thumbnail place. And so this is one of like our four thumbnail rooms. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. I've been spending time with the thumbnail team. And I know when you called me, you have some exciting news to share, which we'll get into in a yeah. bit here. But I have to ask a few more questions because when I was here and they doing thumbnail shoots, everything was so precise. And like I have like this visual, yes. which is 40 variations of thumbnails. Are you going to throw it up on the screen? Of course, man. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. One time uh, me and Colin Samir did this and they didn't throw it up on the screen. No, no, like, we, what is he looking at? I got my team. We have this pre-vis. So yeah, all right, everybody's it up. But yeah. Colin Samir, get one up. But uh, yeah, tell me, tell me a little bit about how you shoot thumbnails here because I heard that you come in here for about an hour a month and yeah. you get a year's worth of thumbnails. So if it's like me laying in sand here, we might potentially lay a bunch of sand on the ground and then put a high camera and film me just laying in the sand. Um, if, if I had to like actually go to the place to shoot them, I'd be shooting thumbnails like. Okay, so this is like a level of dedication. I've worked with content creators all across the board. Highest one being, she's got about almost 10 million subscribers now. And one of the things I will say about these creators that very few creators will ever understand, smaller creators, is the importance of thumbnails. Taking perfect thumbnails. You guys, keep this in mind. Most of the reason people click on something is because the thumbnail was intriguing. It earned their click. That's why they clicked on it. Doi. And so Mr. B is talking about all this stuff. This is a crazy level of obsession. Like I've seen this before on certain creators. We work with certain creators that are like obsessed like this, but seeing that sheet and all of the different variants of different thumbnails, it's kind of par for the course for stuff like this. And this is what sets Mr. Beast apart, puts them at a different level five hours every single day. Yeah. So it's like nice to be able to lay on the beach in a desert island without having to go there. Yeah, know? totally. Um, okay, so dude, I, I know when we were chatting on the phone, you mentioned for six years, you've been building this internal tool. Yeah. Um, and it's been basically been the key to how you've decided thumbnails, like you found yeah. like outlier videos. Um, and, and it's a lot of data that not even YouTube has in YouTube studio, which I haven't worked there before. Just oh, bro, this is going to be a thing for vid stats. It's going to be a one long pitch for vid stats. Thanks, John. Now listen, vid stats, I've used it. It's a cool tool. In fact, I'd recommend people try out the free version. I'm probably going to pay for the paid version because it is cool, but I just want to like be very clear about what we're seeing here. This video is going to be one long pitch, I think, for bid stats. I could be wrong. I haven't watched it yet. We're going to find out here in just a minute. Blew my mind that you were able to build this. And I have a lot of questions about that. Yes. Tell me about the tool and why are you giving away all your secrets now? Yeah, as you can tell, if you look at our channel, like obviously we're, we're very analytically optimized. And over the years, I've just built a lot of tools. And uh, a little while ago, we were just looking at all the tools and I was like, man, these are like really good. And it'd be kind of cool if other people could use them, especially smaller creators. And so that's why we started usats.com because I felt like all these uh, public websites where you can see YouTubers data just wasn't even good. Like there's, there's no other website we can see whether someone's viewing. Okay, so here's the thing. Like, and I think that this might be a little bit disingenuous. Like, that's my opinion. That's kind of how it's coming across. Is like every time you do some type of a sales pitch, right? You have to kind of build what's called an empathy bridge, where it's like you basically say, hey, this is where I was at and this is where I am now and this is the tool that I used to get there. And so people have an epiphany when they're listening to that story and they're like, oh, I'm where he was. If I want to get where he is now, I need the tool that he used to get there. ViewStats Pro Premium is not cheap. 50 bucks a month. I think if you pay in full, I would say it's just under 500 bucks with tax and everything. One of the things Mr. Beast is leaning into right now, some of you guys know this, and this is the reason why it's like, he can't just come out and say this, and it's smart on his behalf not to say this, but one of the things he's leaning into is creating continuity streams of income. Basically what that means is people can get kind of trapped into them and they can 
can just pay over and over and over. They can have monthly subscriptions. So like his chocolate, for example, you don't just buy one chocolate bar. Like if he were selling t-shirts, you buy one t-shirt. Every time he'd release a new shirt, maybe you buy another one. But with chocolate, people eat it all the time. It's like, oh, I want a chocolate bar. I want something sweet. I'm going to go get a Feastables, right? He knows this. And so it's going to be recurring revenue. That's the same thing with this viewstats.com. It's recurring revenue. Now, remember vidIQ, TubeBuddy, both their tools have like tanked. So Mr. Beast is building a new tool and for all intents and purposes, it's pretty cool. And to be 100% honest, like nobody's talking about the strategy behind having these recurring streams of revenue. He can't do brand deals anymore, you guys, because he can't get enough money from the brands. So for him, it makes way more sense for him to shout himself out because then he can get people trapped in these recurring revenue payment plans. Peek behind the curtain, that's at least my opinion, what I'm seeing. Use them for long or short. You know, no other websites allow you to track actual video by video performance to see what video is out of 10 on other people's channels. So that's what we were building, like kind of our own version of Social Blade. But then I realized, like, well, I have all these other tools I've been building for our channel. And like, well, maybe they might also find those valuable. But yeah, it was pretty scary because these things are, you know, as you've used, they're pretty insane. Um, and so the problem though is like these things require a lot of data. And we have a giant team to like turn them into something on the website that's actually usable, which is why it's on Viewstats Pro because it's like we just to convert our tools into something people can actually use costs over two million dollars. And we're building we have a roadmap like a dozen other tools we want to roll over time. So that's why See, I mean he's like leaning into it, how much it costs, how much it can do, what it can do, how many people are into it. He's like laying it on thick, like this is an incredible tool. Everybody should buy. He's gonna make millions. I mean, this website just with his shout out is probably worth over a billion dollars already. Like how many people table rushed and bought this program as soon as he dropped it? Like that's huge. This is a big deal for Beastie Boy. Beastie Boy. <laughs> I forgot about that band. Oh, good times back in the 90s. Child of the 90s right here, guys. ViewStats is a free site, but we're talking about ViewStats Pro. I just want to make sure it makes sense to them because people might be a little confused. Um, but yeah, it's a, basically, I just try to, for as cheap as possible, take everything I use on my channel and um, just give it to small creators so they can use it to get an advantage. Also, yeah. that felt great to say because it's the first time I've ever talked about it publicly. <laughs> really? Yeah. So that's why I was trying to make sure everyone understands it because they're going to be like, what is ViewStats.com? What is ViewStats? What does this mean? Because I've literally never talked about it. I don't, I've never even... Bro, the reason you're talking about it publicly is because you just dropped the pro version. <laughs> Be honest about it. And I'm not saying he's being dishonest, but in reality, like this is a launch. Like he went out and released the videos. Now he's doing the podcast. He's probably going to be on a couple more podcasts just so he can talk about the tool a little bit more. John Uche is a probably a close friend. John's been in the industry for a while, worked at Instagram, worked at YouTube. So he has access to people like this. Tweeted about it, yeah. And even the free tool is great. We're gonna talk about a lot of stuff that will be valuable regardless. Um, but I want to talk about that ideation process. Oh, yes. Because I thought it was so interesting how you've studied outliers. And I want to yes. talk about that video, the dollar versus series. Yeah, talk about the inspiration. Because I don't think people realize how you came to that. And then I got a ton of followers. Yeah, 100%. So for the $1 versus, the thing is, yeah, we've all seen BuzzFeed did it. But also, not only did BuzzFeed. Okay, again, haven't seen the end of this. But my bet is that after each one of these little segments here, yeah, it's gonna be a 90 minute. And then at the end, it's gonna be like, check out view stats, maybe. We're not gonna definitively say that. But my guess is he's gonna be talking about view stats the entire higher time but it's just like people across every format on YouTube, beauty channels, gaming channels, everyone was doing videos where they compare something cheap to something expensive. And they usually did well. And what I like to do is if I see something going viral across like multiple you know formats all, all across YouTube, then it's like, okay, that seems to be something people really like. And you know, they're really interested in that content. So maybe I should just do that like a really peace way on the channel. So like if a beauty channel does $1 versus $100 makeup palette and that pops off and then someone does $1 versus $100 sushi and that pops off. And a video gamer does $1 or $100 computer versus $10 computer. Then it's like, okay, people seem to like this. I'm gonna do a $1 hotel versus a million dollar hotel. And it works. Yeah. I saw that that outlier from BuzzFeed channel was a plus 50X. Yeah, exactly. So you can see like with a crazy It's essentially when I try to think of like how <laughs> What did I just say? Every single time they're going to come back and show view stats. Oh, here's it. It's a 50 X multiplier. <laughs> it's a 50 X multiplier. Uh, let me just show the nice clean uh, view stats screen. Listen, I'm not going to beat them up because I do the same thing in marketing. It's just really funny. And here's where I feel it comes across a little disingenuous. Like it's not declared that this is going to be a pitch fest for this software. There's nothing that says like uh, Jimmy talking about view stats. Like that's not the title. It's how Jimmy finds video ideas using outliers. And that's fine. It's fine. Like I can't complain. I do similar stuff. But again, you guys, I want to call a spade a spade. You guys have to know that if you're watching this, you are actively being sold. This is marketing. It's something that you 100% need to know before you make your decision. It's like if you're coming into this thinking that you're going to, you're just going to learn some stuff. You are going to learn some stuff. You're also going to be pitched to. You're also going to be sold, actively sold the entire time. By the end of this video, probably by now, I'm six minutes in, I'm going to go buy it. <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> this is a good software. That said, again, disingenuous. I just feel like, ugh. like, at least for me, I'm like, hey, if you guys want to learn more about Rafidi and what we do at Rafidi and maybe you want to work with us, there's a video you can watch in the description below. I tell you, see, I just told you. We have a business. I'm actively trying to give calls to actions to our free resources, hop on a call so that we can learn more about what we do. I'm telling you that though, as I'm doing it, they're not telling us that they're actively trying to sell us. We're talking about outliers. Remember I was talking about one of 10 the other day, a couple of people got a little bit testy with me in the comments that I was pitching. Heaven forbid I pitch someone else's software that I use.
use that I love. I've been using one of 10.com to find outliers. Again, this idea of outliers is really just locating things that have done well on YouTube and then making your version of them. So one of 10.com does that. View Stats Pro does that now too. This is one of the things that really pissed me off about vidIQ and TubeBuddy. They had so much data. They're in the YouTube API. They have access to gajillions of bits of information and they didn't make an outlier. Like this was like the simplest tool. They didn't make an outlier identifier, a one of 10 identifier. That just seems foolish. It, TubeBuddy, on the other hand, is off doing like some weird AI stuff that's like doesn't make any sense. This is one of those things I think that huge missed opportunity for vidIQ and TubeBuddy. Um, I think it's the difference between copy with taste versus copy and taste. And I think copy with taste, which you do such a good job of, is like elevating the past, giving credit and blending from different sources yeah. versus a lot of people copy. Oh, bro. Oh, copy with taste and copy and paste. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I don't know John. He's a smart guy though. So this is another marketing tactic. Just want to be 100% honest. Old school model. The model you don't want, copy and paste. The model you do want copy with taste there's some good word usage there good job johnny boy i like it here's the thing when you look at the past and you look at the future and you compare the two what you're basically telling the audience is you don't want to be like this you don't want to be like them you don't want to be old school use view stats it'll make you unique it'll make you the next mr beast okay here we go and paste it's like they're just if you watch it. someone's video and you can't tell the difference in their video my video besides the budget then it's like yeah you're copy and paste yeah. but yeah but like you know me and ryan might sometimes do similar videos i'm not even saying he's copy but like ryan and i could like i'll go visit yeah. hotel rooms one dollar versus ryan will go visit scary Airbnb, scary airbnbs and it doesn't feel the same right mm -hmm. that's like and that's the thing like ryan has his own voice he's right. quirky and he's just like you know let's see him breathe more and blah blah and that's like ryan style and then our style is like a little bit quicker and just show you cool things and spend more money and you know making it epic and um so yeah that's not that he's copying us, but in general that would be like doing it with taste mm -hmm. and then the copy and paste is yeah you know there are tons of other people who have our hotel video just went literally sometimes hit the same hotels same <laughs> thing use my same text on screen speak like me act like me use my cuts use the same time and pacing and it's like be more like ryan invent your own style we need more people like that we need less people that just look at Ryan, look at me and other big creators and just, you know, literally copy and paste. Like, if people wanted to watch myself, they'll just watch my video. They don't need to. I, I don't disagree with his point, by the way. Like, the point that he's making is just don't copy. And there are a lot of people who just blatantly copy. There was a creator, Kevin David, a couple years ago. I don't know if you guys know who Kevin David is. He was big in the, like, Amazon FBA space. But he created this presence and was called out for legitimately taking other people's scripts, transcripts of their videos, and rereading them in his own words. He would literally just reread them, act them out the exact same and run ads he did with YouTube videos apparently allegedly there's evidence here you guys can watch it all this is the type of person that you don't want to be on YouTube you don't want to be a plagiarist you don't want to be a copycat you don't want to be somebody who is labeled as Mr. Beast number two <laughs> poop joke sorry guys I'm a dad although I did get called out from some Canadian who didn't like my poop jokes but that's Canada for you and for those of you who do have a sense of humor in Canada welcome I analyzed your past 50 videos okay and I noticed that they fall into nine different categories okay here we go analyzed them these are your different thumbnails broken down into series yeah so uh, over on the left he has our protect series where you know we did a protect $500,000 keep it I thought that was a pretty good video and after we filmed it I was like I like this like we should double down on it and do two more and then as we double down on it I was like oh this is kind of repetitive and people honestly I would say that's like the biggest flop of a series we've done in a while people just didn't really you know they're like it's good but they didn't care that much and so that's dead like and if you look here you'll see like most of these go more than three that one I was like, all right, we're done. I don't like it. Um, and so, you know, not every time you hit, but speak. So that's probably like the worst format series, whatever you want to call it. We've had the best is the one dollar versus that crush. I think la in like the last 365 days, I think plane ticket is like the most video on all of YouTube. Um, that's not an ad or something close like that. Um, and so for the one dollar versus, I have the opposite uh, problem. I think we might have stopped that like one video too early. Mm. We did uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Holy crap! Yeah, we did. We did eight of them, but they were really spread out over yeah. a year. People really liked it. Like, and it's something anyone can you know understand. Whether you're 10 or you're 50, watching us drive a one dollar car, like a hundred million car, just sick. You know what I mean? And that was also a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I try to end like because like if you do a series long enough, it's like exciting, exciting, and it's not really exciting, and then you keep doing it, it becomes kind of lame, and people turn out. I try to kind of stop like year before it loses excitement so i try to stop series early before before people have to tell me to stop them i like to you know because if not they usually come known for that so i like to always keep things fresh and keep changing it up i think that though is one of the few ones where i kind of wish i did one or two more because that was like it's crazy i mean these are averaging like 250 300 million views every single one of them and retentions are great people love them so whoops this is actually a great strategy we're just talking about putting things into content verticals having different segments that you're hitting in each of your verticals like for us in in this i talk about ai i do exposés i talk about shorts i you know i've really leaned into shorts you guys like when i do shorts and some of you guys don't like that but it it makes for better videos because you guys share your opinions in the comments and we have good conversation going back and forth. That's all strategy. All right, you guys, I'm not going to watch the whole thing because I don't want to go through an hour and 25 minutes of this and then have some like copyright claim or anything like that. I want to make sure that's still an original piece of content. My whole point in this was just to illustrate like sometimes Mr. Beast has ulterior motives in the things that he's doing that he's not 100% upfront about. I know he wants to always position himself as like being honest and forthright and lovable, likable, everybody likes him, but there's an obsessive beast behind him. There is a little bit of a pun intended. Like he is obsessive about his content. 
uh, almost to the point of it being dangerous. And we've talked about this before. Like in the past, he's done interviews with Colin and Samir where he's talked about his mental health and being like getting crazy about his content. But just know at the end of the day, like there's great content within this entire interview. Just make sure you're completely understanding going into this that you're going to be sold on view stats. That is, it's happening all throughout the entire video. They keep going back to view stats page, they keep talking about view stats. So just make sure that you know that going into it so that way it doesn't feel disingenuous. Now, you know, bring a pad and paper, take notes because there's a lot of really good stuff. And if you guys want to see what is happening with AI right now on all the social media platforms so that way you are warned of what is coming down the pipeline, check out this video right here. Catch you on the next one. Later, bye.